Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Node Summit 2017, downtown San Francisco Mission Bay Conference Center. 800 people, a lot of developers, pretty much all developers, talking about what's going on with Node, the Node community, and some tangential things that are involved in, the, in, uh, in Node as well. We're excited to have our next guest on. He's Stephen Fluin. He's a developer advocate for Google. Stephen, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So first off, just kind of impressions of the show. You said you were here. Last year, the community is obviously very active, growing. I don't know that they're going to be able to come back to this space for very much longer. No, what do you probably, think? Probably not. I love how the community is continuing to grow and evolve, right? Because this technology is moving faster than almost any technology I've seen before, right? The, I, I call it a combinatorial explosion of complexity because there's always new tools coming out, new ways of thinking, and that's really rich uh, and a great way to have a lot of innovation happening. Right, there was a great, uh, one of the early ones this morning, uh, the speaker said they had one node app a year ago, and now they have 15 in production, 22 almost ready, and 75 other internal projects in one year. Yeah, it's, it's so definitely why? crazy. So why, I mean, there's lots of things as to why node's successful, but from your perspective, why is it growing so fast? Sure, I think it's fast because it's the first time that we have had a real extended ecosystem where a lot of developers are coming together, bringing their own perspectives, uh, and it, it's a very collaborative environment. Everyone's trying to help each other. Okay, so you just got off the off stage. You had your own session. I did. About Angular on the server. Yes. For the folks that missed it, kind of what was the main theme of, of, your, uh, of your talk? Sure, sure. So I'm on the Angular team, which is a client-side framework for building applications. Um, and so we've really been focused a lot on really great web experiences for the client. So how do we run code as close as possible to the browser so that you get these very rich, engaging applications? Right. Um, but one of the things that we've been focused on and has been one of our design goals since the beginning is how do we write JavaScript and TypeScript in a way that you can run it on the client or the server. And so just last week, we announced uh, new support has landed in our CLI that makes this process easier so that you can run your applications on the server uh, and then bootstrap a client-side application on top of that. Why is that important? Sure, it, it's important for a few different reasons. So you want to run applications sometimes on the server. Uh, first, because there's a lot of computers that are processing the web and browsing the web across the internet. So there's right. search engines, there's things like Facebook and Twitter, which are scraping websites, looking for metadata, looking for thumbnails and other sorts of content. Um, but then also there's a human aspect where uh, by rendering things on the server, you can actually have a increased uh, perception of your load time. So things look like they're, they're loading faster, um, while you can still then, on top of that, deliver a very rich, engaging client-side experience with animations and transitions and all those sorts of things. So that's interesting. Before we got started, you talked about you know, kind of thinking of the world in terms of the user experience at the end of the line versus thinking of it from the server. I thought you were going down kind of a server optimization, power, you know, th when you say think, think about the server, those types of things, mm -hmm. but you're talking about a whole different set of reasons to think about the server. Yeah, absolutely. And the way that that connects to the rest of the web. Yes. Yeah, because there's a lot of consumers of content that we don't necessarily think about when we're building applications. Right, right. right. We, we normally think about the human side of things, but um, having an application, whether it's a single page application or whatever, that is also well optimized for servers can be very helpful. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty. Uh, servers as the consumers. Servers as the consumer, which I guess <laughs> makes sense, right? Because. Google's indexes and all the other ones are crawling servers. They're Absolutely. not. They're not scraping web pages. Yep. Hopefully, I assume. <laughs> I assume we're past that stage. All right, good. So, what else is going on in terms of the Angular community that, that you're working on next? Sure, sure. So, I think we're really just focused on continuing to make things uh, easier, smaller, and faster to use. So, th those are kind of the three focus points that we've got uh, as we we continue to invest and evolve in the, the platform. So, how do we make it easier for new developers to come into the the kind of Angular platform and take advantage of all we have to offer? How do we make smaller bundles so that the uh, experience is faster for users? Right, right. Um, and then how do we make uh, all these things understandable and digestible for developers? It's like the bionic man never went away, right? <laughs> it's still better, stronger, faster. Yeah, exactly. All right, well exactly. Steve, thanks for, uh, for taking a few minutes out of your day and, uh, and sharing your story with us. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely, Steven Fluin from Google, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you next time. Take care.